This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. Today, we're joined by a musician who wrote what's become an anthem in the Trump era. It's called Young, Latin and Proud. Helado Negro, translated into English as Black Ice Cream, has re-released the song about the same time that Donald Trump announced his candidacy for president and attacked Mexican immigrants, calling them criminals and rapists. This is a part of the song. And you can only you, you with what you got. You don't have to pretend that you gotta know more. Cause you are young, Latin, and proud. Young, Latin, and proud. Young, Latin, and proud. Young, Latin, and proud. Cause you woke up. That's feeling Young, Latin, like and you Proud by Lado Negro, no, performed here in the Democracy Now! Me. studios. Well, to learn about this song and the musician behind it, we are joined by Lado Negro. We're joined by Roberto Carlos Lang, an acclaimed Brooklyn based musician of Ecuadorian descent. His newest album is called Private Energy. Welcome to Democracy Hi, Now! Amy. Thank you. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. So, talk about this anthem that you wrote actually a few years ago. You've re released it now. Yeah. I wrote it in 2014, 2015, and when you're writing things, when you're writing music, a lot of times music and I think visual art, when it's not narrative based, which this wasn't necessarily, a lot of my music isn't, it um, kind of just comes out as like a, it's your mode of self-expression. And for me, it was this time travel lullaby that I wanted to make. And it was me knowing the things that I know now and the feelings that I've kind of been able to figure out how to deal with. Uh, sending this song as a message to a younger me. And that's what it was, and just kind of this message of encouragement more than anything. Like, all these things are you, and, 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 and describing that through the song. What did you think when Donald Trump announced his presidency as he ascended the escalator at Trump Tower and then talked about Mexican rapists? It's one of those things where um, the um, we had a show coming up and the way a lot of this works is, like, we were like, oh, we're going to release this new song, Young, Latin, and Proud. And five days prior or six days prior to us, what we had planned, when we had planned or to release the song, um, this Trump announces his presidency, and then he starts talking about Mexicans being rapists and criminals. And obviously, there's, like, on one side, everyone thought it was some kind of, like, response to him. And it wasn't a response to him. It's a response in a general sense to a lot of things that are, have always been happening. But then it resonated immediately because he's, he's a, you know, he's in the limelight, so. Let's go back to Young, Latin, and Proud. Cause you are young, Latin, and proud. Young, Latin, and proud. Young, Latin, and proud. Young, Latin, and proud. And we are young, Latin, and proud. Always be this one thing, and you always have this to be you. The people who will be here waiting for you always will be one with you, and you'll be one with me. Young, Latin, and proud. Young, Latin, and proud. Young, Latin, and proud. Young, Latin, and proud. Tu abuela is young, Latin, and proud. Tu tía es un young, Latin, and proud. Tu hermana is young, Latin, and proud. Tu tío es un young, Latin, and proud. Young, Latin, and proud. One day you'll be old, Latin, and proud. That's Young, Latin, and Proud, Roberto Carlos Lang, a.k.a. El Alo Negro, which is black ice cream in English. Where did you get your name? Oh, I make up a bunch of different things for it. So uh, I like this one. I like saying this one thing. I like to tell people this. A friend of mine described my music as um, music from a country that doesn't exist. And so I kind of extended that into uh, a food from a country that doesn't exist. So, yeah, that's, that's a description. Tell me about your family, um, where you come from. 
My parents, they were born in, in Ecuador, in oh. South America. Where in Ecuador? In Guayaquil. And they moved to New York, um, like my mom, I think, when she was like 13, and my dad when he was 16 or 17, like a lot of people do. And so then they went to school in New York and then moved to Florida, and then I grew up in, I was born in Florida and grew up in Florida. Where in Florida? In Fort Lauderdale, in the area called Lauder Hill. And talk about music and why it was so important to you. Who were your parents' influences and then who were yours? Yeah, I think, you know, it's funny. It, this kind of, like, um, talks about a lot of things in terms of music, social things, political things. Uh, growing up, we listened to so much in Spanish, right, in South America and Latin America in general. There's a lot of types of music, not just what's on the radio or what people think is Latin music. And um, so that ends up being, like, the commercial aspect of how things get pigeonholed into, like, this thing. So you walk up to somebody and you say, yeah, I'm, I sing in Spanish, and they, everyone starts to think you're, you know, there's timbales and congas on stage. And this narrow perspective ends up being the thing that ends up defining a lot of people or th defining you for them. And so growing up, my family, you know, in, in Latin America, there's so much. There's, like, avant-garde composers that are making wild uh, classical compositional music. There's people making um, amazing experimental uh, music in the 80s that was electronic. And then there's people making the things we know commercially that are uh, on the surface, right? And so in my in my family, we were listening to a lot of like uh, the pop stuff. My mom was listening to like a lot of pop music, and like, and, like Rafael Leodan, like these people who are like pretty popular singers down there. And um, and then my dad listened to like a lot of like folk, kind of like Ecuadorian folklore music. But then at the same time, living in Miami, you're listening to um, we're living in South Florida, you're listening to a lot of. Uh, um, like Caribbean dance music, like stuff from Cuba or, 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 or Puerto Rico or Dominican Republic or anywhere, you know, even um, a lot of like Jamaican music as well, because the neighborhood we lived in was Caribbean. But so there's like a lot of dance, dancier music like that. So that, that was like a big infusion. And then just growing up in the United States in the 80s, there was so much in Florida happening and that I was listening to on the radio. So for me, music was just like, it's all encompassing. It's everywhere and all when the time. When did you start singing? I didn't start singing until um, I was 29, until I was 30, yeah, when I made the first El Alo Negro record. I had been making music for a long time, and then I just started to—I decided to start singing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really sing at all. And can you talk about singing in English and Spanish? Yeah, I, it's—that's always been a natural thing for me. Like, I grew up in a place— where everyone was speaking Spanish and English. And so it was never, you know, people ask me, people have asked, asked me more pointed questions where they're like talking to me if it's like a crossover decision or if it's some kind of like a um, way of marketing myself. And, and it's just, that's what it is. You know, Spanglish was very much the, the language spoken in where I grew up. Talk about the tinsel mammals, Roberto. Yeah, that's. There's a lot to talk about, but um, sorry if there's too much to talk about. I um, I perform by myself mostly. I have been. I've, I've slowly, as I was touring and making music, I've um, decided to tour by myself through electronic music, be true to the sounds that I'm making. And with that, I was always ner I got a show, a giant show in Mexico, and I got really nervous. And I was really naive. I thought I was going to be on this giant stage, and I was really going to be on the smallest stage there. So I was trying to come up with a concept, and I was talking to my wife a lot about it. She's a visual artist. And I um, decided to make these costumes, and we made them completely out of tinsel. And this is like 2014. And they ended up evolving over time. I would get volunteers. I would reach out um, via like Facebook or social media outlets and try to find people who would want to perform on stage. And what I found as I was doing this, it was, it was pretty remarkable. So we did something like 80 shows like this, where I got volunteers, people I'd never met before in these towns as I was traveling, doing 100 shows or more than 80, yeah. And people would come and they're like, yeah, I want to, I would, I've always wanted to be on stage, but I have stage fright. And so putting this costume on created this um this anonymity it gave them this like power of anonymity and people would then 
feel like a whole different person. We're on radio and television. So as we show this on television, um, describe it for our radio listeners. Yeah. It's a giant um, full-body costume that there's no— um, you can't really tell where the head or the arms are. You can see where the feet are. And it drapes over the whole body, and it's completely covered in tinsel. And so it's kind of like this giant—it was inspired by, like, Cousin It and, you know, um, uh, and something like, you know, some kind of, like— uh, These gyrating tinsel -its. Yeah, a tinsel -it and some kind of a peaceful ghillie suit, you know, for non-nefarious—using it for, for positive reasons. So I want to ask you about another song uh, that you're performing here at Democracy Now! Studios. Rolling Stone calls your songs gentle calls for strength and cultural confidence in the face of intensifying racial tensions. Talk about It's My Brown Skin. Absolutely. It's, it ends up being—a lot of the songs I, talk, I sing are just songs to myself, like, it's my own therapy, dealing with my own anxiety about my own— ideas and things that I'm dealing with myself, like, how do I talk about this? And It's My Brown Skin was—it's kind of—it's a love song to me, to, like, my identity, like, the things that I feel as I'm in, in the public and how can I um, uh, make this something where it's not so much um, excluding anyone, it's just talking about how much I can—, f I can feel confident in, in my skin, you know, feel confident in all the things that um, I have to deal with in my skin, not just, like, in the superficial—not just in the superficial, but also in, like, the social, political climates, right? Like, where I'm touring and I go to towns where maybe not a lot of brown people are at, and it's something I think about immediately, and maybe not everyone does, but I think about it, and so I think about it in a way just like you would— comfort your skin, you would moisturize yourself, you know? Let's go to It's My Brown Skin. It's the color that holds me My brown is the shade that's just for me I'm never not missing anything but me Cause I love you and I can't miss anything but you and you're stuck on me and all this time I'm inside you our time together we grow we stretch and we show as stuff as it goes and it won't rub off oh There's friends of similar shades of different ways who feel the same way. Don't ever forget them. Cause I love you and I can't miss anything but you. And you're stuck on me and all this time I'm inside you. Roberto Carlos Lang, a.k.a. Alado Negro, and Rafik Batia performing It's My Brown Skin. Talk about your political influences, Roberto. I would always travel to Ecuador a lot with my family every year, like spend like three or four months there. And throughout that time, we'd be there during elections, non-elections, when, you know, every couple of years the, there was a coup and the president's out for corruption reasons, for all types of wildly 
uh, crazy reasons. And and through that, I think growing up, I was seeing that, and I was like, like, I was learning about like the public um, environment with government and through a different country. And then as I was learning government systems in school, I think I was like, this seems like such a sham. Like growing up, I was like, this is this doesn't feel real, like what I'm being taught here versus like what I'm seeing. There, there was always this distrust. And, and I think the main reasons I, I, I think I, I really got excited about Bernie Sanders, I'm not going to lie. And so um, I think I became a little bit more aware, a lot more aware last year because I felt this need for, for a lot of what um, was being represented on TV and like through Donald Trump. And I think that helped push me more than anything. I think I had more of a social um, push throughout my life, through my music and everything. I felt more of that than to feel politically, necessarily politically pointed to, to describe myself as that. I'd never really wanted to be that. But I think in the past year, I think I've felt way more polarized. How does it feel to be Latino under Trump? How does it feel to be Latino in the United States? It's always, you know, I, I, I answered this question a couple of times, too, and I think um, I've told people this, and I think, I think it maybe comes across the wrong way, but I do think it's true. I think it's same as it ever was. I think I, a lot of people, um, a lot of people with more power and more money maybe are talking about it more, so more people are hearing about it now in a different way, in a different light maybe didn't know that people were feeling this way. And so they're dealing with their own thing. They're dealing with their own sense of ways to talk about all this stuff to themselves, which a lot of us, like, private energy, like my record, and this stuff were songs for me, to me. And you know? talk about why you called it private energy. This is your 10th album? Something like that. 10th release. And, um, yeah, it, it was for that reason. There's this overwhelming feeling that, like, um, what can I do? That's what I felt. Like, what can I do all the time? What can I do to help be helpful, be someone that's, like, contributing to society and not feel crazy all the time that you're not doing anything that's, like, um, making, a, making it a better place for, any, for anyone else, you know? I think anyone who doesn't feel that, I think I, I'm scared for them. And that's what private energy meant. We're going to go out again with Young, Latin, and Proud. But talk about the Young, Latin, Proud community that you sing to around this country and outside of the country. You sing in Mexico. You sing throughout Latin America. Sing in Poland. <laughs> what was that like? Um, it was wild. Poland was beautiful. People, you know, that's the kind of special thing I think about music. And um, you can, it's, it can be layered like that, where someone can fall in love with music and then all of a sudden learn a whole new thing about music. And I think that, for me, when you're talking about political songs or talking about anything that has anything to do with music um, that revolves in this space, I think you want to be true with it in the sense that you love the song before you talk about anything else. Like, how is this music going to be music that resonates with you first? And then these messages end up seating themselves. And I think that's what happens. As I'm touring and I'm hanging out with people and people are talking to me, it, it's special. I have, I, can't, I have zero responses for people. When people tell me how they feel, I just listen. I think it's really cool. In the song, as we go out with it, you sing young Latin and proud, and you say, one day you'll be old Latin yeah, and proud. Absolutely. <laughs> Do you feel old at 37? I, I don't. I don't. F I never feel old. I only feel old when um, I'm tired. <laughs> So where are you headed? We're getting you right before you go out on tour again. Yeah, we're going to the Midwest. We're going to Chicago and Detroit and Cleveland, St. Louis, all types of Rust Belt action. And then back on the East Coast, I'll be in New York. Yeah, it's going to be good. Well, uh, we'll link to your website and to your tour. I want to thank you, Roberto Carlos Lang, for being with us, a.k.a. Lado Negro, thank Black you. Ice Cream, the acclaimed Brooklyn-based musician, Avec in Descent, his new album, Private Energy. This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us. Because you are young, Latin, and proud. Young, Latin, and proud. Young, Latin, and proud. Young, Latin, and proud.
Cause you woke up feeling like this You woke up knowing that you be you for the rest of your For the rest of your life For the rest of your life Cause you are young, Latin and proud Young, Latin and proud Young, Latin and proud Young, Latin and proud, and we are young, Latin and proud.